Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Deer Lake United Church's online streaming service. Uh, my name is Joseph. I am the minister here at Deer Lake, here being my place, but the minister of Deer Lake Church, which is located on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. Uh, you might notice that this video looks a little different as far as the camera goes uh, from previous weeks, and I'm running into some technical difficulties. So luckily we have a new computer coming, but it's not going to be here until actually probably from a month from now, about a month from now, uh, because of delays on how things are working with shipping and so forth, and given getting it and setting it up and so forth. So I apologize for the video quality, but it's not as good as previous weeks. We need a new computer. And so luckily uh, we are going to get one. Um, it's on its way. This morning, um, I do want to welcome you wherever you might be. Normally on a long weekend such as this, we would be traveling. I don't know how many of you are actually traveling versus staying more local and close to home. Regardless if you're joining us live at 1030 or watching us later on in the day or in the week, a special welcome to all of you. Uh, as you can see from our miniature communion table, that we do have communion this morning. So we have some bread and the cup. Uh, I have the traditional because I'm prepared for it, uh, for the grape juice. And then instead of doing a loaf or a bun, I did a uh, little pita breads. So I found them at the store and I thought, why not? Use something different. And so the invitation for you to use something different, use whatever you might have on hand, any type of liquid, if it's grape juice, if it's maybe more of a wine variety, to milk, to water, any type of liquid uh, is wonderful. And any type of food, carb that you have, whatever fits within your diet and whatever you have on hand can be used for Holy Communion through this or virtual means. And so you are invited to be collecting those items. Uh, later on in the service, we'll be doing communion, so you have plenty of time to gather something. And it can be as simple as coffee and a bagel. Whatever you decide uh, is communion worthy on this morning. I also want to do a special welcome. You know, we're constantly trying to change things up to make this more interactive, make this more of um, an enjoyable experience for all who are watching. And so we are trying to um, offer this service not only through our YouTube channel, which many of you are accessing through the What's Up email link. So whenever you click on that link in the e-newsletter, it takes you to the website for YouTube. And you'll notice the YouTube icon in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. We're offering another way of viewing this service live at 1030 right now, in fact. If you want to join others on Zoom, you are also able to see it on Zoom. Now, before I give you the instructions, and I'm going to be quite thorough this morning and walking you through the process for it, but before I get too involved, you need to make a decision. The decision is, uh, as it's been reported to me, is video quality more important to you? If it is, then stay on the YouTube channel. If it's more important to, to see other people on camera with their face, to be part of a community watching it, even if the video lags a bit, then Zoom is the answer for you. So what you're going to want to do if you want to get on Zoom, and maybe you'll try it out one time and say, ah, not so much for me, and then just go back to YouTube. Uh, there's great flexibility here because this is all on you. And perhaps you don't have the tech skills, and so the mere fact you're watching this is a miracle enough, so you are staying put. That is more than acceptable. But for those of you who are a little tech savvy and want to experiment and try to do worship in a different way, you can try to get on Zoom. So all you need to do, and I'm going to walk you through it live through audio. Uh, of course, hopefully there's not going to be any tech glitches on your end because I can't walk you through that. But if you just minimize me, you should still be able to hear me if you minimize your window, whether you're on an Apple or a Mac or a mobile device, whatever you might be on. And you're going to go back to that What's Up email that you got the link for this worship service on. And instead of clicking on the worship link, you're going to click on the fellowship time link. And that fellowship time link is going to open up Zoom. If you've done fellowship time before or been on a Zoom meeting before, it's 
it's going to be very familiar. It's going to bring up your web browser. You're going to click allow, I believe, because it's going to ask you permission to do Zoom on your computer. You'll click allow. It will ask you if you want to join with computer audio. Click yes to that. You do want to click with audio, computer audio. And it also might ask you about the video if you want to have your video on. Say yes to that as well. And then you're going to be able to join in and click into that Zoom. And it should be full screen for you for the service. And then over on the right side of the screen, I don't know if this is right or left for you, but on the right side of the screen, you're going to see little squares of people who are also watching the service with you live. You will be muted, so you can't talk, but you can see each other. Uh, we're muting you, so in case anyone has a background noise, a telephone rings, it doesn't disrupt for everyone else watching the service. In addition to that, because of we're, we're live streaming on Zoom as well as on YouTube, people without computers can also tag in. And I'm going to walk you through that too this morning, just because we're going to be there and we're going to do it live and together to a degree. Maybe you're not going to do it at home, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So on that WhatsApp email, you'll also notice a, an option to call in and you can actually do this for both the worship service. Now you can only call in at 1030 in the morning on Sundays to listen to the service. This is not 24 seven access to the service. So this only is for live. And then you just stay on for fellowship time. So in essence, we're just streaming through that fellowship time link, the whole service, plus then following the service, the fellowship time. So all you'll do is you'll grab your phone and you're going to dial the number that was in that email. And I'm going to put this on speakerphone. I'm going to try and see if the, the computer will pick it up on me. But the number is 778-907. 2071. Again, that number is 778-907-2071. And I'm going to call it. And you may not be able to do this live right now with people who don't have technology, but you can watch this video. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. So you can maybe do this for next week as well. So it asks for our meeting ID number. So our meeting ID, which is also in that WhatsApp email, is 819-775-19185. And then you'll press the pound sign. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound to continue. Now we don't have participant IDs, so we're just going to press pound a second time to continue. You are And that should tell me I'm in the room and I should start hearing audio right now. I'm not hearing audio because it's going to cycle back to me, but that's all you have to do. So dial the number, enter in the meeting ID, press pound, press pound again, skip over that participant ID uh, question, and then continue on. And you can actually then listen to the service, whether on a cell phone or a landline, whatever kind of telephone you have, you can then listen to the service live. So it's a great option for those who are a bit intimidated watching um, on the computer. Um, call in and you can also then stay in after the fact for the Zoom um, fellowship time. So I hope those two options of viewing it with other people, also telephoning in as well as watching on YouTube. We're trying to make this as inclusive for all people in our community as possible. I'm hoping this is a helpful way for all of us to stay connected and engaged in worship. So friends, we turn now to light the Christ candle. The candle this morning, or the theme this morning, I should say, is about struggling. Struggling with, well, quite frankly, struggling with God. Have you ever struggled? Have you ever had questions, had doubts? And yet, this morning, we show up to worship week after week, asking ourselves these questions. It is the candle that we turn to, the flame, the light, that we wrestle with, and yet it is embraced as well. It is embraced, the light is embraced in the midst of whatever darkness may be happening in our lives. It's a light that helps to ground us and center us, to bring us into a spirit, into a space in the presence of God. 
Friends, I'm going to look around to make sure my studio is set up here and see what all I have. I'm going to um, bring us in this morning with doing the ringing of the bell as a centering prayer. So I'm going to ring the bell and, and give a few moments of silence, a few seconds of silence, and then I'm going to uh, lead us in prayer. So may your hearts and your spirits and your minds and your bodies be entering into this place, into this time of holy and sacred worship. And so we pray, Holy One. We gather here in, in anticipation, seeking an encounter with you. You come among us when we least expect us. Expect it. You invite us to wrestle with our questions and doubts. You richly bless us and call us each by name. Come now, loving one. Come as we worship you together as your people, as your followers, as your disciples. Amen. And so, friends, we join in together as into the new creed, as a, a reminder of what we as a community believe and what we stand for. Won't you join me? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, and life and death, and life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And so, friends, together as a community, we sing our opening hymn, Come, Let Us Sing. Dwell among us and call 
prayer of illumination. God of struggle, we come before you this morning open to being confused, being doubtful, having questions. We know that your holy word gives light, truth, and wisdom. Grant us these in this time and in this moment as we hear the ancient story of your chosen people. Amen. A few weeks ago, we heard the story of three strangers visiting Abraham and Sarah, announcing that she would give birth to a son. That son did come and was named Isaac. Isaac then had twins of his own, one named Esau and the other Jacob. This morning, we are going to hear a story from the life of Jacob. For those familiar with the larger story of Genesis, Jacob is not necessarily someone with great character and integrity. For example, he tricked his father Isaac to receive the inheritance that was actually meant for Esau. In this story, we find Jacob alone at night. Perhaps you too can relate to this feeling, figuratively or literally, of being alone in the darkness. Pay attention to what occurs between Jacob and a stranger in the night. The scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 31. In the course of the night, Jacob arose, took the entire caravan, and crossed the ford of the Yabok River. After Jacob had crossed with his possessions, he returned to the camp, and he was completely alone. And there someone wrestled with Jacob until the first light of dawn. Seeing that Jacob could not be overpowered, the other struck Jacob at the socket of the hip, and the hip was dislocated as they wrestled. Then Jacob's contender said, Let me go, for day is breaking. Jacob answered, I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? the other asked. Jacob, he answered. The other said, Your name will no longer be called Jacob, or heel grabber, but Israel, overcomer of gods, because you have wrestled with both God and mortals, and you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, Now tell me your name, I beg you. The other said, Why do you ask me my name? And blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, face of God, because I have seen God face to face, yet my life was spared. At sunrise, Jacob left Peniel, limping along from the injured hip. This is the witness of Israel. Thanks be to God. I honestly, I honestly cannot believe that you did that. You mean, I, you can't believe I did that? I can't believe you said that. That was so embarrassing. I cannot believe, why do you even say it? Saying whatever I said, even though I was 100% right, is nothing compared to what you did. I mean, seriously, I don't even know who you are. I don't know what you're even thinking. What planet are you on? What planet are, am I on? I'm on Earth. Ever heard of it? It's where the rest of us are. You are just on a different planet, different universe for all I know. You're crazy. I'm crazy. You're crazy. I am so over this. I just, I'm at my end. I cannot believe you. I just, I don't know what, oh, ugh, I just am so frustrated. You're frustrated. I'm just done. I am done with you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. I am out of here. See ya later. Hi. You think I was gone? That was it? That was a show? That was the production? What was that exactly? Do you know? Well, that was my lame attempt of trying to talk about fighting. Fighting? Well, whenever I went to the word uh, dictionary to look up the word wrestle, it came in two varieties, the noun variety and the verb. And the verb definition of wrestle is to engage in a fight. And so you watched a fight. Have you witnessed a fight like that before in person? Have you ever even dare suggest, dare I suggest, have you ever participated in such a fight before? Don't be too quick to raise your hand on that one. 
So we come to a Bible story. But how did we get here? How did Jacob get to that night alone in the woods when a stranger came and started to wrestle him? Well, it's like Gary, who did the scripture introduction, began with Abraham and Sarah, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Well, Sarah ended up having a child, and that child was named Isaac. And Isaac married a woman named Rebecca. And in the womb, Rebecca had twins, Jacob and Esau. And even in the womb, these two fought. And the story goes that as Esau was born into the world, Jacob was holding and grasping onto Esau's heel, which is why Jacob gets renamed and it talks about grabbing onto the heel. It's because that's how he entered into the world. And so the two, uh, the relationship between these two brothers, these two sons, was always divisive. And I don't have time to go through it all. And, and I'll say that Jacob, who is named, renamed Israel, who obviously had great significance uh, in, in even today's world, has significance. Um, no time to talk about Jacob as a human being, but as I said in the, or as Gary said in the introduction, Isaac, or J, I'm sorry, Jacob, sympathies for Jacob is light. Jacob is a very interesting character, not exactly a guy that you want to uh, look up to by any stretch of the imagination. So where we find Jacob is Jacob, um, well, he tricked his father into giving him the birthright. So Esau came up first, which makes him the eldest, which meant he had all the rights once his father would die he would become owner of everything and have everything. Jacob, the younger of the two twins, tricked his father into giving Jacob himself the uh, birthright. So whenever Esau found out about this, Jacob fled because he got scared because Esau was much more stronger uh, than Jacob was. And so Jacob fled and left. He ended up getting married, long story on that, or longer than I want to talk about it in this time together. So he ends up getting married, and God tells him to come back home. So he's coming back home to his brother Esau. So he sends his wives, his multiple wives, longer story even on that. So longer, um, his wives and his servants and everyone else, he sends across the river and he stays behind to make sure everything is good and to go and that they can uh, travel for the daybreak. So he finds himself alone at night in the middle of this family drama. I'm not going to get into this morning the family drama because it doesn't matter for my purposes, uh, for what I'm preaching about. But just know that he's not exactly just in a pleasant space. He's nervous. He's scared because he's about to go back to confront his brother who, who really has legitimate reasons to be quite angry at him. So not only is Jacob wrestling with God in this night, he's also probably wrestling with so many emotions and anticipating perhaps even a much more violent fight with his brother upon their return. I won't go into what happens. Go to Genesis chapter 32 for the full story on Esau and uh, Jacob and what happens between the two brothers. That's an interesting story. Go check it out because I'm not going to talk about it today. What I am going to talk about though is this notion of wrestling versus fighting. So I really thought about this because a friend of mine when talking about this said, well, fighting really is such a more negative word than wrestling. So if I say we have a congregation that fights, well, then that's really a negative thing. That's not something we want to participate in. But if I tell you we're a congregation that wrestles, that questions, well, that's a, a good thing almost. That's just something I want to be involved with, that wrestling, that struggle. But whenever we use the F word, the fighting word, well, then all of a sudden we want we want to distance ourselves from that. So I was really thinking about this. I was thinking about the difference between wrestling and fighting. And I grew up in high school. I, my friends, now I was never a jock, as you can tell clearly, but I hung out with the jocks. And some of my friends were wrestler friends. In fact, uh, one of my good friends ended up becoming the state champion uh, for wrestling in, in high school. And what I admired about the sport is that not only is it a, a, struggle between brute strength. You have two two people together in a closed space, 
but you also have to have somewhat of a wit to it, to how your body works and how their body works and the space between the two. Um, and so it really engages a, a battle of the wills to a degree. But as I really thought more and more about the scene of a wrestling, and I don't have an image to show you of a wrestling match, but I, I hope you can imagine or picture one of a wrestling match. What do you notice about that versus whenever I think of a fight, of a war? Uh, in a fight or a war, it's broken relations. There's a winner and there's a loser, and then they go off, right? It's ending. That's what I was trying to portray in my opening in some creative way. But in wrestling, in wrestling, there is a staying together. You are in an enclosed space. There is no storming off in this. There is only togetherness in this difference, in this struggle, in this, in this division. And so I started thinking about the difference even more of this fighting, which, which fighting kills community. And there's almost like two extremes to fighting that kills community. There is the never fight, which is somewhat paradoxical, right? So there is the sense that if you never fight, if you never raise up, I really disagree with you. I really see things differently than you. Well, what that leads to is a shallow relationship. It fosters actually a, a ethos, a sense of distrust, because you don't feel free to actually say anything because you're fearful that it might lead to major conflict. And then the other end of that fighting spectrum, which is what this fears, is broken relation. There is the sense of fighting so much, so violently, that there is an end to the relationship in some form, and in, in probably the most dramatic form, in its physical form of, of death, of murder. There is uh, there is the end of that relationship, end of that community. So ironically, there's two ends of the spectrum, and yet they both yield the same results. Damage or death to community, to relationship. Whereas wrestling, I wonder, is if not in the middle, because you're still having to stay connected. You're having to stay bounded together in the midst of those differences of will, of strength, of thought, and staying in connection and going one way at one moment and then another way at another moment and back and forth and back and forth. And in our world right now where we are so divided, where we are so, you, you think that you're crazy or you think this, wow. In a world that ends relationship, I think what we're called to do is to, to wrestle more together. Perhaps then, in some irony of, of play on words, it's to stop fighting and start wrestling. Start wrestling with each other. And perhaps even that means start to wrestle with, with God. Now, as I told this story to a friend of mine, he was really confused. He's not a church guy. And so he was saying, well, that's really weird that we have to wrestle in order to get a blessing. Because after the end of the wrestling, I mean, that's what Jacob said, right? Like, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. That's whenever God gives him a blessing. And my friend said, well, doesn't, doesn't God want everyone to be blessed? Why do we have to wrestle with God in order to get that blessing? So I really thought hard about that. And I think the answer is, of course, yes, God wants everyone to be blessed. God's blessing is not reserved for a few or for those who are worthy. God's blessings are for all people, all people. That's the meaning of grace. Probably a different sermon or another sermon to go into that. But at the same time, just as God blesses everyone, God desires or relationship. And that really goes back to being Trinitarian. So we as Christians believe in God, the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is, in God's own nature, a relationship. Three in one, one in three. And in that relationship, God is continually beckoning us to come in, to be part of that holy dance, that sacred dance, that life, that divine, abundant life. And in that 
relationship with the divine, sometimes, sometimes it's perfect and it's peaceful. And other times, well, other times I think we wrestle. I think we struggle. I don't want to use the word fight because I just talked about how fighting is broken relationships and wrestling is staying connected, but there is tension there. And I think God sees that tension actually as a good thing. I think God wants us to wrestle because the other options, well, again, going back to that spectrum, one being too nice So if we don't wrestle with God, if I say, when have you last wrestled with God? And if your response is, well, I don't wrestle with God, my and I say, why not? And you say, well, I I don't want to be angry at God. I don't want to be mad at God. Like, why, why have issues? Why struggle with God? I would encourage you to consider what it would look like if you did wrestle with God. I would ask you to consider, perhaps, well, I guess trying to ask more questions than to have judgments here. But I wonder if there's some fear, some fear that if you were truly honest with your struggles, with your doubts, with your questions, well, that might lead you into territory or land that you don't feel comfortable with. And that's about you and not about God. See, God can handle whatever questions and doubts we might have. God can handle us being upset. God can handle us being confused. God doesn't want that to be limiting. God wants to use that to deepen the relationship. And on the other end of the spectrum, that angry vibe that I'm too mad, why did God let this happen? Well, then there's a letting go of God because it just hurts too much. And to those people towards that end of the spectrum, I say God still loves you. God still wants to be a part of your life. And God can handle your anger. God can handle your words. God isn't human. God doesn't respond the same way we do. We trigger each other. We escalate things. God doesn't need to be triggered. God does not need to be escalated. God can handle it. What God continually wants is for us to stay connected, no matter what we are feeling, in our highs and in our lows. And what this story tells us is that in the wrestling, in the match between these these two wills, be it two people or one deity and one human, there will be a blessing. And the blessing will occur through change. Yes, change. That word that we get so tired of and we really want, but we don't want all at the same time. We have such an interesting um, relationship to the word change. See, so many of us like stability. We like things staying the way they always were. Now, I'll be returning to this theme in a few weeks because really, if we think about it, we don't like things to stay the same if they're bad. We only like things to stay the same whenever we feel that they're good. We feel very subjective there. Do you notice that? Like individual too. Whenever I think things are good, that's whenever I want things to stay the same. It doesn't matter if other people are in harm or uh, hurting or in pain or lacking in need. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm feeling good, I want that to stay the same. And yet nothing in our world ever stays the same. Even us, our very own bodies, our physical bodies are constantly changing as we age. Some of us are more aware of it than others of us. But as we age, different parts start to to kind of break down. And it's like, what the heck? Why am I changing? Why do I have to change? The, The world changes. Seasons change. We're constantly going from summer to fall, to winter, to spring, back to summer. So sometimes changes are are secular. They come round. And sometimes, well, it's just a one-time thing, and then it continues on in more of a linear fashion. But regardless, the world is constantly changed. We are constantly called to be changed through God's blessing, through that wrestling match, through staying in relationship with one another. So it's not about not fighting. It's about learning how to fight, if we use that word, 
fight or how to wrestle well, to wrestle in a healthy way so that we stay in connection with one another. If we aren't wrestling, then I don't think we're living the true grit and grind of the world because the world has some major problems right now. Don't know if you're paying attention, but we've got to talk about things. We've got to wrestle with some things right now. But we got to stay connected. We can't go over here to the fighting and the broken relationship either. We need to stay connected, bounded together as one people. And in that staying together, in that one people uh, being, way of being, then we start to experience the body of Christ, being the body of Jesus. You see, that's, that's the good news of this story is that not only are we encouraged to wrestle with God at time, excuse me, at times and in seasons in our world, not only does God want a relationship with us that includes the highs, the joy, the praise, the celebration, but also the lows, the questions, the doubts, the uncertainties. We have a God, we have a God that can handle all of it handle all of us. The good news this morning, friends, is that if we hang on, if we stay connected to that which is greater than all of us, if we stay connected to each other, even when we disagree, well then, we shall be blessed. Amen. If you've met me before in person, some of you at least have heard me say that I love 
church closets. And so I'm starting to go through some closets, uh, mostly with permission from people that oversee it. But as I was going through a closet, I found a stole that matches uh, the wonderful decorations and banners that uh, were already in our sanctuary hanging up. So I'm sure you all are well familiar with it, but uh, I stumbled upon these. And so this is beautiful. So I'm wearing it this morning. I think it's a stole. I'm pretty sure they're stoles. Um, I'll hear from you if they're not stoles, but I'm wearing it as a stole this morning. So uh, my search into church closets, you never know what you're going to find. So I got to adjust here, make sure I'm looking, you know, sharp, as sharp as can be here. So I match in with the, uh, the, the scene that's before you. With that said, friends, I am wearing the stole because we are about to respond. Respond to the word that you have heard this morning through the act of Holy Communion. So this is the time now to to make sure you have that liquid, whatever that might be, that drink and that bread, that carb, whatever you wish to engage with, um, to eat with, I guess, not engage with, but to eat with, uh, for making communion, communion. Normally, communion is filled in our sanctuary with music and call and response, and it's much more interactive. Unfortunately, given this uh, 2D version, I'm going to just lead the lecture, uh, the liturgy as um, I've prepared it, and then you'll be invited to break the bread at home however you wish to have it. Uh, I've talked about this before. You know, some people like to dip the bread into the grape juice. Some people like to eat the bread and then drink the juice. The great thing about uh, being virtual is you can do communion however you feel comfortable and whatever is meaningful for you. And so you are invited, friends, to join me in the holy and sacred act of communion. It begins by saying, the Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts to the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of light, giver of all life, source of love. You guide the sun, cradle the moon, and toss the stars. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. You breathe life into us and set us among all your creatures in a covenant of love and service. Even when we turn away from you, you do not forsake us. You send your prophets to proclaim your justice, to remind us of your promise of peace, and to call us back to you. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, we praise you for your love revealed to us in Jesus, who walks with us, our wisdom, and our way, sharing our joy and our sorrow, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and setting the captives free. So it is that we join the song of all creation to proclaim your goodness, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Mighty and tender God, in Jesus of Nazareth, we recognize the fullness of your grace, light, life, and love, revealed in words that confront and, com and comfort us and teachings that challenge and change us, and compassion that heals and frees us. And now we gather at the table to remember, and to be filled with such longing for your realm, that we might rise together to turn our worship into witness and to follow in your way. We remember that when Jesus ate with his friends, he took a loaf of bread, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. After the dinner was over, he, he took the cup. He took the cup. And after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends.
He said, drink this cup that is poured out for you is the promise of God made in my blood. Whenever you drink it, remember me. And so we pray, loving God, we rejoice in the gift of your grace, remembering Christ's life and death, proclaiming his resurrection, waiting in hope for his coming again. Grant that in praise and thanksgiving, we may also offer ourselves to you, that in our lives may proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Send, O God, your Holy Spirit upon us and these gifts, that all who share in this loaf and this cup may be the body of Christ, life, light, life, and love in the world. In this hope, and as your people, we praise you. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, O, o Most High God, now and forever. Amen. And so, friends, I invite you to take, take your loaf, take your drink, and have, may you have a holy communion. And so, friends, we now respond with our prayers. I'll begin with a pastoral prayer and then invite you to join in a paraphrased version of the Lord's Prayer. Please pray with me. On this day, creator of sun and of rain, we come before you with gratefulness and joy, with sadness and worry, with sorrow and regret with questions and doubts. Loving Spirit, we are grateful for the wonderful relationships in our lives. We know that we are loved and we are cared for by so many in this world. We are thankful for our families, for our friends who are like family, for the kind neighbors and acquaintances who enrich our lives for the better. Sometimes, though, God, it's easier to break in relationship with another person than struggle in the midst of it. Honestly, there are times, there are times when we do need to break relationships for our health and for our well-being. And then, well, then there are times we break relationship, we break community far too quickly too easily, too arrogantly. On this morning, as we think about our relationships, as we think about our relationship with you, give us the courage to seek reconciliation where it is needed. Give us the strength to wrestle with difference and with uncertainties. Give us the wisdom to know when to keep on hanging on and when to release and let go. And gracious one, always, always forgive us when we fail to recognize appropriately those decisions need to be made. Faithful one, we, we pray for congregations in the United Church of Canada, including specifically this morning, Chilliwack United, Chown Memorial Chinese United, Christ Church, Gabriola SM, Cliff Avenue United, and Cloverdale PC. We pray for the world as COVID-19 continues to devastate countries, including Indonesia, Egypt, the Philippines, Ecuador, and Sweden. And now, loving God, we come 
before you as one body, one people, saying the prayer that your Son taught his disciples, by saying, Eternal Spirit, source of all that is and that shall be, the hallowing of your name echoes through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the earth. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Friends, as you know, uh, those who regularly attend, it is the time in which we would normally pass the plates with offering. There are many ways to give to our community uh, your financial gifts. Check out our website, dluc.ca. You'll see a donate button on the right side. Click on that. It will have all the details. Thank you for all of your generosity. As far as announcements go this week, we do have quite a few this week. So we're getting closer to that fall time. So I just want to give you a quick check in real fast. For the last few, well, probably months at this point, I've been doing a midweek check in on Wednesdays at noon. For those who have joined in on that, a special thank you to you. But overall, it seems like people have other things to be doing than that midweek check-in. And so I'm going to go ahead and start canceling. Well, I am canceling uh, that that opportunity to connect on Zoom. And so we are no longer, or I at least, will not be on Zoom at noon on Wednesdays. Um, and so hopefully you are connecting. It sounds like many of you are connecting with each other off of Zoom using either uh, distance face-to-face -face, uh, meetups or over the telephone. And so that's wonderful. So no more Wednesday midweek mid check-ins. As far as what we do have going on on Zoom, I just want to give you a friendly reminder of all the things happening. So we do have fellowship time on Zoom after this service. If you're watching online already on Zoom, then you just stay put where you are. If you are watching on YouTube, jump over using the link in that WhatsApp email to get onto Zoom. It will be great to see uh, so many of you. Some of you are quite regulars and others of you I haven't seen in a few weeks and others of you I haven't seen at all. So uh, as many of you can get on, that would be fantastic. We also have every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. the men's breakfast group that's meeting. It is at 8, not at the normal time. I've been told of 6 something. I don't even, I, my brain doesn't comprehend. So 8 a.m. Uh, Zoom, if you need the link, let me know uh, if you can contact Gary or any of the men uh, at the men's group. They'll definitely give you the contact information. Uh, so join us Tuesdays at 8 a.m. The minister study on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. is still going on. So we are starting around 7 o'clock. I don't know if you're still pounding pans. I still hear at times uh, pans cl uh, clapping and stuff and so forth. Whoa, losing my voice. Um, but I don't know if you still are doing that, but I think mostly everything's starting at 7 o'clock. So minister study Wednesdays at 7. And then on Thursdays mornings at, I believe, 10 a.m., there's a women's walking group that normally walks Deer Lake. Well, they're meeting on Zoom as well. So if you want to join that, uh, shoot me an email and I'll connect you with the right person to get connected in that group. And then the choir is meeting monthly at this point on Thursdays at 730. So if you're in the choir, again, if you need links for any of this, shoot me an email, uh, drop me a line or contact other members in the choir. And I'm sure they'll be able to give you the information. I do want to give you a heads up. So we're a month away. So we're already in August. Can you believe it? I cannot believe we're already in August. The months are just flying by. But we are going to have a special celebration on September 6th, which is a Sunday, obviously, um, for kickoff Sunday. I know normally for kickoff Sunday, we would have a barbecue or a picnic of some type. And, and you all know more about that than I do, uh, as someone who's never experienced it. But I do still want to honor that tradition. Not that we're going to have a barbecue. There will be no food served. And I'm not going to give you all the details. All I want to put into the uh, universe right now and into your minds, a little seed that says, save the afternoon of September 6th, which is our kickoff Sunday, save from like, say, 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock 
keep that open if you don't mind. Um, possibly nothing will happen, but possibly something will happen. It's like Christmas. It's going to be a surprise. Christmas in September. Um, more details coming up, but I just want to go ahead and mark your calendars. Sunday, September 6th from 3 to 8. You're, you might be doing something with church, and I'll leave it at that. Um, for those of you who are interested in that, of course. Also, earlier this weekend, I have to go off camera real fast for a second to grab. Um, earlier this week, I was given a gift uh, in person, and it's um, given to me on behalf of the congregation. I don't know how many of you were behind this or included in this and so forth, but uh, for my ordination and celebration of my ordination, uh, I received this lovely, it's a traveling communion set. So I don't know if you're familiar with this. I don't know if you can see it very well on camera, but what it is, I'll just show it real fast. I know the service is running long. I know you guys are over it, but I do want to give you a proper thanks. So for those of you who know, so first of all, it's a little metal plate and it says in remembrance of me. And then what you do is you put your glasses and there's six of them. And then there's a little container for the wafers and you put the wafers on this. And then whenever you go, you can serve it to people in um, assisted care and, you know, who can't come to church. If you do home visits, uh, that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying. You take this and then they can drink the juice and then they can have a little piece of bread. And there's a little container in here for the, the juice. And there's a little container here for anointing oil, um, which sometimes we do. I know on Ash Wednesday, uh, they were saying that it was common in Deer Lake to do um, a blessing in that sense. So there's a little six, six cups in total and the glass and a really nice, beautiful set, to be honest with you. Um, so just if you're a part of that, and if you, even if you're not part of it, take credit here because this is from the entire congregation. So just a special thank you for this beautiful, I'm going to break it now and then it's going to be ruined. So hang on, let me not talk. I cannot multitask. All right. Well, thank you. But thank you for the beautiful gift. It is truly um, beautiful and will be definitely used, uh, hopefully, whenever I can get back to doing in-person visits. I do like doing in-person visits. I promise you. It's just can't really do that right now. But I just want to make a special thank you for that wonderful and beautiful gift. All right, friends, I know I'm talking too long. So uh, those are all the things in, happening in our community. Lots going on. Please join together in our closing hymn, We Are Not Alone. We are not alone. We are never God is always with us, we are not alone. We are not alone, we are never alone, God is always with us.
so, friends, we have come together to worship, to participate in Holy Communion, to respond to the word, to the word that we have heard. Now we go out into the world. Of course, as I've said several times now, Zoom, fellowship time, do it, get with it, hold off until um, you check in with people, Go uh, hold off on going out and living your lives until you check in with your church community first. It never lasts too long, usually around noon, we all uh, dissipate for lunch. So come in, say hi, quick hi, it will be great to see and hear from so many of you. With that, friends, I say, we go out into the world, ready to face whatever the week may bring. May God, the Creator, ever bring you strength for the journey. May Christ give you assurance in the midst of your struggles. And may the Holy Spirit bless you in all of your words, thoughts, and deeds. Go out in the name of love incarnate. Amen.